this is Amy with Farah Moxie and we're going to do a table runner and it will be vaseless. And what I have here is an Oasis tray and this is a double brick tray. And so if you take this foam, it fits in nicely. But I'm going to cut this in half and the reason being is when the foam is this large and high, it takes up quite a bit of greenery. So we're going to basically um, double our foam and I'll score it, and then we're gonna be cutting it down the middle. So I'll do that and we'll be right back. So I've cut this in half, I took one brick, sliced it down the middle, and then I also cut it to be a little bit shorter, and the reason being, and I can't tip it up to show you, but I wanted some gaps, and the reason being is I want extra water to sit in this little tray reservoir to keep hydrating my foam. When it was completely full, I couldn't, um, store any extra water in this, which you'll want to do. Uh, you can easily cover up those gaps with um, greenery. But you can, you can start this the day before or two days before. You just need to remember, remember to go back and fill this up. So we're just gonna start by greening things out first. And we're gonna pause here because I don't have my snips. Before we get started greening this out, I want to say that if you have a round table and it's not rectangular, you can always get what's called a Lomi bowl, L-O-M-E-Y, Lomi, and this is six inch and this is about um, one fourth uh, piece of brick and you can put it into this Lomi bowl and do the same thing but just more rounded and to work with your table a little bit better. Okay, so we're going to get started. I've got Salal lemon leaf here and we're gonna cut things short and drive it in. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you're probably already predicting that we're just gonna green it out first because that gives you your coverage um, and you can make sure your mechanics are hidden before you add your flowers. So I always like lemon leaf because it's inexpensive. It tends to go pretty far and I can get my coverage that I want. And then I will, over the top of that, I'll use some prettier greens like Agonis, Italian Ruscus, my Eucalyptus. You can always spray paint your tray, but honestly, when you have things greened out, you shouldn't be able to see it. So I always cut things at an angle. And we'll focus on this section, then we'll speed it up so you don't have to Watch me do this entire thing. I'm coming back over. I have this pretty Italian ruscus and this is will give you length. So if you want to, you can extend the length of your runner. But we'll keep it pretty short so it all stays in the video. And you can decide how tall you wanna make it. You can make it more compact. You can make things more airy. You can have like a design to where it feels like things are growing or just all at the same level. It's totally up to you. I think we're gonna make this, I think, pretty symmetrical. Um, if you're going to use hydrangeas, you can always break them apart and insert them into the foam, but that water and that casing is so important because hydrangeas, they don't love living in foam for long periods. I think roses, carnations, ranunculus, everything else seems to work pretty good in foam, but hydrangeas don't, they don't thrive, they don't love it. So you see how I kind of spilled things out, did some coverage for my tray. You can angle things down, and now I'm starting to put the greenery upright. And I don't mind some holes, but I don't want huge gaps, because I just want to come back in with the flowers and what I call backfill. So I have some Israeli Ruscus. And so you can already see like we would really have to use a lot more product if we hadn't have cut that brick in half. So for my DIYers, that's just a way to stretch your budget, make your flowers and product go further, use less foam. I love Nagy. I love anything that I can break apart and use in little pieces. That's why I have a hard time like ordering Italian Ruscus because it's usually, you know, uh, a good three to four feet long, but I only get one strand of it or five strands in one bunch. 
So I usually like cut it down and put the pretty end, finish things off with that pretty end. And then this little blunt end is still useful. I just have to bury it more because I don't want to see the cut top. And these are just little pieces that have, that we've broken apart. Okay, so you get the general idea. We're gonna finish this out and speed it up. So we've got some red heart roses and I'm driving it in. When you drive it in, you wanna make sure that you don't go so far that you hit the back of the plastic because if, you, if your stem is sitting on the plastic, then it can't drink. So only insert it about a half inch. This is some Lysianthus here and it's the uh, chocolate variety. The great thing about Lysianthus, uh, this is one stem and so I have a lot of blooms on this so I can cut it apart. The same thing goes for spray roses and mini carnations. So I feel like I can get quite a bit of coverage with this type of flower. Okay, so we've greened it out first. We backfilled with our carnations and our roses, and then we came in with our more delicate and textured items. So in this runner, it's like a double tray runner where we cut the brick in half. I used about 10 roses, about five carnations, um, probably one fourth bunch of thistle, and one fourth bunch of the lysianthus. And in total for greenery, I had like a pretty, uh, you know, broad mixture of it, but I would say that you would need to like have one bunch dedicated total. So I probably used about, oh, one fourth bunch of each greenery. So we'll put the recipe below. If you have any questions, then just leave it in the comments below, email us and visit us at flowermoxie.com. Thank you so much for joining us.